alternative medicine. If you're wondering which issue in the healthcare debate is next on the horizon, you might want to look to Washington State. In Seattle, which some call the mecca of alternative medicine, insurance companies are squaring off against the state government. They are challenging a new law that requires them to pay for alternative treatments like acupuncture and massage therapy along with the traditional health care that they already cover. It's a controversy the rest of the country might soon confront. And as our Steve Fox tells us, temperatures on both sides are rising. This natural medicine clinic in Seattle is a busy place these days. Patients come here for alternative medical care, including massage therapy, constitutional hydrotherapy, and herbal and other organic healing potions. Exercise, vitamins, and diet take precedence over the tools of conventional medicine. So we want to do everything that we can to support the digestion, not only with what we're doing herbally, but just what you're doing dietarily, because that's the easiest thing for you to change. Do you like squash no. and sweet potatoes? <laughs> no. Mary Alice Sanders had suffered for years from chronic fatigue and muscle pain. Then she began four months of acupuncture treatments twice a week. I just can't tell you what it's done to my life. It's changed everything, and I'm constantly telling people, you need to go do this. You need to find out more about it. People like Mary Alice represent a growing trend in health care. A recent study found that nearly one out of every three Americans has gotten some form of alternative medical treatment at an estimated cost last year of more than $13 billion. Dr. Joe Pizzorno is the co-founder of Seattle's Bastyr College, the first accredited natural health teaching university. Our current medical philosophy is oriented towards treating disease. Natural medicine philosophy is oriented towards promotion of health. And in general, when you want to promote health, you don't tend to use as many drugs and such because they have so many side effects. Instead, you use nutrition and herbs and the other, you might say, wonders of the earth to help support the body's processes. Yes. The members of Seattle's King County Council clearly have faith in natural medicine. This Republican-dominated, generally conservative legislative body is voted to spend up to $2 million to establish the nation's first-ever government-subsidized public natural health clinic. As I went from one council member to another, I found that 11 of the 13 council members strongly endorsed natural medicine and were using it in one form or another. We're not talking about uh, uh, snake oil. We're not talking about uh, uh, biocosmic vortexes or crystals uh, that help you define or manipulate a person's aura. If all goes as planned, the county clinic will be up and running by the middle of the summer, providing alternative medical care to people who in the past could not have afforded it. Supporters say the natural health bandwagon is driven by consumer demand. The subsidized clinic was the brainchild of Marilee Manthe, who serves on the boards of both a major urban hospital and a naturopathic university. People stop me all the time. When can I get this in my insurance policy? I go to the acupuncture, I pay for it out of my pocket. They want to get the this as part of the whole picture that they're entitled to. And in a precedent-setting legal move that has the potential to elevate naturopathic practices from the fringes of medicine into the mainstream, exactly that has already begun to happen. As of the beginning of this year, all health insurance companies operating in the state of Washington are required by a law believed to be the first of its kind in the nation to pay for medical treatment provided by any and all state-licensed natural health care practitioners. In response, 11 major insurance companies have filed suit contesting what they see as the state insurance commissioner's overly broad demands for naturopathic coverage. I would love to go get a massage every day. Absolutely. Do I need one medically? No. Could I justify it medically? Yes. That's the concern. You know, how do we manage that without causing just a huge surge in cost? That concern is shared by insurance companies in other states across the nation who are following the Washington coverage debate closely. Currently, only 10 states license naturopathic doctors, and only Washington requires that all natural health practitioners be paid by insurance companies. But supporters believe that will change as the movement proves itself and gains credibility. Alternative medicine is, I think, the thing of the future. Uh, Western medicine has not helped a lot of my friends. It, it didn't help me, and we definitely need something like this. This is Steve Fox for Good Morning America Sunday. Bye. Bye. Well, clearly not everyone has jumped onto the natural medicine bandwagon when we return two views of Washington State's landmark legislation. Good Morning America Sunday is brought to you by Quaker Oatmeal.
So as we've seen, a growing number of Americans are now turning to natural medicine, which practitioners claim can treat everything from arthritis to heart disease. But does that mean taxpayers should be paying for it? Well, joining me now to explore this issue are Dr. John Renner. He's the founder of the Consumer Health Information Research Institute. He joins us this morning from Kansas City. And from Seattle, Dr. Joseph Pizzorno. He is the co-founder of the Bastyr University, which teaches natural medicine. And gentlemen, thank you for being with us this morning. Dr. Pizzorno, let's start with you if we can. What kinds of natural remedies is the uh, state government in Washington asking insurance companies uh, to uh, compensate people for? Well, I think we're looking at two issues here. The first one is, in terms of the insurance requirement, all natural medicine therapies are supposed to be covered. The other issue we're looking at is the King County Natural Medicine Clinic. And at the King County Natural Medicine Clinic, we're only treating a limited number of conditions with a limited number of natural therapies. Such as what? Well, we're looking at six conditions, uh, osteoarthritis, uh, benign prostate hypertrophy, migraine headaches, and such. And with those, we'll be using uh, nutritional support like uh, glucosamine sulfate for the osteoarthritis. Uh, for the migraine headache, we actually aren't planning on using much in the way of nutrition. Uh, we will be primarily using dietary control with these patients. So in Washington State, if you submit a bill uh, saying that your, your primary physician is a natural uh, physician, will you get compensated, or do do you go to a uh, a, a, um, a natural physician just for extra things like back pain? I think it depends on the kind of natural physician you go to. I'm a naturopathic physician, and as such, I'm fully licensed to make both a primary care diagnosis and to provide care. So many patients would come to me as their primary care doctor, and then we then use medical doctors as specialists when necessary. In contrast, an acupuncturist or a massage therapist or a nutritionist has more limited scope and does only a small part of medical practice. Okay, so now we have some idea of what we're talking about here, Dr. Renner. Um, as Steve Fox reported, one in three Americans are, are now using some form of natural therapy. Is it time, do you think, that insurance companies and governments maybe helped Americans afford this? <clears throat> well, I think we have to be careful of our terms. Uh, the report in the New England Journal of Medicine didn't say that one in three use natural therapies. They said they use alternative therapies. And alternative therapies is an extremely broad field. Uh, it can uh, have all the same good and bad ingredients in it that regular medicine can. And I think we have to be very, very specific. And uh, if we're going to discuss this, we have to separate political credibility and muscle from scientific credibility and scientific uh, excellence or reputation. Okay, well, let's uh, do that then. And let's, let's talk about things like massage therapy, like acupuncture, some of the things that uh, Dr. Pizzorno's clinic may be offering people. Do you think that's an appropriate thing for insurance companies to have to uh, help people pay for? Well, I think there are limited uses of many of these, but I'm concerned when it starts to be inclusive of homeopathy, of colonic therapy, uh, in some parts of the country, not necessarily in Washington, uh, but there's lots of wild and woolly things that are going to be included, including just some out-and-out -out quackery. Okay, well, let's I talk about this, Dr. Pizzorno, because I, when I go into a traditional doctor's office, there's a nice uh, uh, diploma on the, on the wall with a, a shiny sticker on it. I know that that fellow is certified. What's to stop anybody in Washington State from hanging a sign on the window saying, I am a massage therapist, come to me and you'll get some of your massage back, the money for it? Well, I think consumers in Washington State are very fortunate because we actually have very good laws regulate, regulating the practice of natural medicine uh, in the state. For example, at Bastyr University, we are fully accredited so that the edu education we pr provide for our students is very, very high quality. And also, in order to practice then, they have to pass very rigid and, and rigorous state examinations to demonstrate their skills. And Dr. Renner, so has that been your experience? Dr. Renner, has that been your experience when you've studied oh, what's I going on in this field? I think the word naturopathy across the United States has many, many definitions, and uh, Dr. Pizzarno knows there's been intense debates between uh, uh, different licensing boards and the word naturopathy. Uh, to have an accredited institution with people on your faculty who have had, uh, you know, uh, let's say, uh, their share of uh, credibility issues. Uh, graduating from a non-accredited university, uh, to me, would be uh, one sign that the faculty doesn't have their act together. Okay, Dr. Pizzorno, you have uh, 30 seconds just to respond to that, and I'm afraid we're running out of time. Go ahead, sir. 
Well, 80% of our faculty have doctorates from accredited institutions, so we have high quality education at Bastyr. Okay, thank you very important. much, gentlemen. We appreciate your time very much, and we're sorry we didn't have more of it. Take care. And good morning, America. Sunday continues right after this.